So you were, you've been sober for two years. What mm-hmm. was the point at which you decided, okay, like this is enough. My life is on a downward trajectory and things have got to change. I had been saying this. I had been talking to myself for a long time. You got to stop this. What the fuck are you doing? Every morning I wake up with a hangover because mm. I binge. I was, I was a binge drinker. I wasn't drinking by myself. I right. wasn't drinking in the morning. But when I started drinking, it the floodgates opened. And right. I would binge. Let's get cocaine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's shots of Jameson and then, yeah. Right. Coke and all that shit. Could you perform that way or no? No. But it was always after. Like at Second City. Yeah. Because when you're doing Second City in Chicago, you're like a local celebrity. And you go to the bar afterwards and everybody just saw you kick ass for two hours. And they're like, we got to buy this guy shots. Yeah. And then it's Jameson and then it's fucking Miller Lite and, you know, yeah. white guy drunk. Yeah. And then I would get, you know, I would be an asshole and. You know, yeah, do stupid shit, right? And then eat a burrito. <laughs> yeah. So well, you read a book, right? You read a book uh-huh. to help. So, you. but then to, to answer your question, I, I, there was one night, there was one night where I, um, uh, took a bunch of mushrooms and took a bunch of Molly, mm. and drank Ooh, a bunch. What a weird combo! Totally weird combo. And so what it did was the the Molly made me feel all happy, mm-hmm. and the mushrooms made me like look at my life. Yeah. And I had this fucked up night where I stayed up till. Noon the next day, my heart, doom, 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 doom. and that that night, I was like, "You're done, dude. You're gonna you fuck your kill your bottom. yourself." Hit I your hit bottom. My bottom. Yeah. So no M and M's, kids. No M and M's. No Molly and mushroom mm-hmm. combo. That's right. Yeah, you hit your bottom. What do they call it candy flipping or something like that? Is that There's what it is? So that's a real thing. It. Yeah, candy yeah. Flipping. So but, you read a book though. So then, okay. So then the next day, I'm talking to myself. You're done. You can't fucking keep doing this. And I was calling some friends and asking about AA. Okay, I'm like, what, you know, tell me about this AA. I have a lot of friends who are doing it, and I was wanted to learn about it. Mm-hmm. But I always knew, and it, not to say anything about AA, but, again, I'm an atheist, and I know that there was a religious thing to it. There is. Whatever. Whatever. I, I, and I know certain people do it differently or whatever, and they, you know, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. Don't. I'm like, what the fuck? Cut to five years earlier, I used to smoke cigs in college. I know what those are, yeah. <laughs> and I read a book called The Easy Way to Quit Smoking, okay? And that ha- that is what made me quit because it was great. And so then I look and I see this guy also wrote a book called The Easy Way to Quit Drinking. And I read it cover to cover and I haven't had a drink since. Oh. Wow. That was two years ago. Wow. And you don't have desire or anything? Not at all. It takes away the desire. It's That's amazing. what the book does. We get into this um, discussion often because he's very, I mean, and I get it. He's very gung-ho about AA. Mm-hmm. And he feels like that is the only way to get sober mm-hmm. because it works for him, right? Sure. But I'm a believer in, you know, people they taking different paths based on their personality, based on, you know, like it's very circumstantial. It's also, but he, we fight about this all the time. And I do think there are multiple ways to get sober. Yes. So congrats. So, so. I, I, yeah, you. I do. But can I make an argue? Please, please. May I argue? Please. Yeah, yeah. In AA, I've seen bottom dwellers, dudes that were literally homeless mm-hmm. and been almost on the verge of wet brain. Uh-huh. In those specific cases, right, In in when it comes to, like, chronic alcoholism, yeah. I believe that 12-step groups are probably the only way to do it. And I'm a spiritual nerve. Inter- you know what? He is right because I'm I'm an atheist. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily believe in a god, but I will say it when I see someone so fucked up. I'm like that person needs Jesus because sometimes that is the only salvation. And there are people who get on the right path just when when they when they fixate and they believe in something so deeply. Mm-hmm. And even though I don't believe it, I think that it would probably better their lives. But it's also it. isn't it, isn't it isn't the god thing that um, it is truly based upon. It is getting out of yourself and helping another human being. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. my fears and all my depression and everything is based on self-seeking motives and being self-centered mm-hmm. and living on self-will. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where's me, me, me? Mm-hmm. And that's where my depression sits. The reason why people feel better after an AA meeting is because when people are sick in the room and they have a week or three days or a day of sobriety and they're scared and they're they don't know what to do and you reach your hand out and go hey you want, can i buy you a meal do you need a ride home hey you can call me anytime you want 24 7. that act of doing that is what i think the key of aa is is helping another human being mm-hmm. the god thing isn't most people that i know in aa don't talk about jesus 
or it's it's not it's like it's this ambiguous you know thing that it's just a power greater than yourself but i think the real key is is that for me yeah i might be able to stay i mean like i right now i have a i have 14 years but i haven't been to really that i'm not active in aa in this last year i would have to say that if i was more active in aa right now i'd be much happier wow I have okay. I have a question then. So for someone, let's say like me, I'm so my belief is always self accountability. Mm. I can never get myself to think that a higher power took away my addiction. Let's suppose I I became an addict. That's where um, that's where I would find myself a little confused because what if I was an addict and I'm like, look, I don't believe in a higher power that's going to remove this addiction. I want to believe in myself and my own accountability to rid myself of sure. this addiction so mm -hmm. how do you how do you address somebody like Beca me then? but i'm going to argue this is that you don't have an addiction so it's like you would know if you had an mm -hmm. addiction that oh my will isn't working i see it's i don't have a choice it's beyond me. no matter it's beyond me there's nothing i can do i've i've gone through all these different roads and the, all the doors are shut and i'm fucked but right. do you get what i'm saying though exactly. i want to drive the wheel i want to drive I the wheel if i had that life. then i wouldn't have need a I don't have that. I see. Okay, I got yeah, it. I can't stop I understand. on my own. It's 9 o'clock now. I have to do a show in 30 minutes. Okay, let's wrap cool. up with a, with a question. Yeah. Take Chris with you.